Alright, so, um, I might, okay, take that line. Alright, so let's, let's, um, continue, right? I'm just pointing out this particular book right here, Daily Psalms. Let me get enough, some more light on this so you can see this right here, Daily Psalms. And there's more of the uh, week, Psalms of David, the Empiric Psalms of David. This is, this is the annotated edition, right? So. This has some of the key annotations. It's not fully annotated, which would make it a more voluminous book. And some of the the fuller um, the fuller details in this particular book or in the Psalms, one would discover, and the Holy Spirit would reveal to them, would reveal these things, right? Would reveal these things to each. Some of the more detailed and some of it, you have to recognize when some things are personal testimony. You may have a personal testimony on the word. You understand? But it's basically how that word um, was manifested in our lives individually in faith. So we're testifying to that. And that may not be applicable to the next brother um, situationally, but it's the testimony of faith that they strength and an encouragement so we truly are sharing with each other good news you know what I'm saying and that's what we're supposed to be ministered of the good news that is called the gospel and the gospel of the truth Aras the Sari is the good news of the real majesty Kedamawi Haile Selassie if the good news of his majesty and God's works are based on the teaching of his imperial majesty at the core of the teaching of his imperial majesty is a personal um, discipleship is a personal discipleship one must learn of this for themselves they must know the truth for themselves and the bible you understand the bible is that key you understand the bible the education is the key but the first education is that spiritual education and then latter education is secular. Now this is just the opposite in the birth wrong or how we have been born before repentance before we're born again. For most people they teach you secular education, worldly things, how to be another cog in the wheel of, of, of Satan's system of things, his world system of things. But we know there's no peace, there's no prosperity, there's no blessing, and there's no life, no life eternal in that. And this is why our Lord has come to give us life. Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach to give us life and life more abundantly. First and foremost, Yeshua, he came for the Israelites. And then that's to say, for the Ethiopian, for the children of Israel, and thus for the children of the Ethiopian. He came to a specific people. He said, I, I have not been sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, the Israelites, or black folks, lost sheep, we rejected them. And if you want to know why are niggas so effed up today, why is so much God awful? It's like a curse, it's like, like something wrong with niggas, something wrong with black people, something's wrong with the way we be living. It all emanates and comes from that root. That's what we have to know who we are and where we stand in the struggle. So there's so much things to say right now, and there's so much things to say, but we want to focus on the basic building blocks. You understand? And when we don't focus on these basic building blocks, which are stepping stones, they become stumbling blocks. And we see that the movement, the Rastafari and the Forward to Africa movement, the coming out of Babylon, the Exodus, the movement of Jah people, has experienced 40 years of inertia. 40 years of virtual inertia, which is just like what the 
the Beit Israel or the children of Israel experience in the wilderness. We could almost look at point to point, scene to scene, incident to incident, and see these very same things exclusively among so-called black people, so-called Afro-Americans. You understand? Africans, enslaved Africans and Americans, the Caribbean, so-called black people, lost sheep, Ethiopians abroad. You get it? That's very important to know who you are as a people, as a, as, 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 as a group, as a race, as, as actually a chosen race. You understand? But in violation of that covenant, when we're not living in that covenant, when we don't recognize who we are, that gives Satan, the devil, the evildoers, and their human agents the opportunity to make our lives a living hell. So at, at, at the very crux of it, you understand, on a, on a very interesting level is law. You understand? It's the very same thing with law. So you hear the Christian preacher say that um, um, we're not under the law, we're free of the law. Like, like, but they have preached that to the point of lawlessness. You know, and this is why we look at the morality in the black neighborhood and the black community among black people. They have exchanged the true gospel in the fan of Christ, both at its individual personal responsibility, as well as in the greater picture of who we are as the once lost but now found black sheep or Beta Israel. They have preached those things. You understand? They preached the, the, the fall. They have created a false gospel. And I often say, if, if, if the, um, the so-called Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, if you can read the Bible just to get physically blessed and health-wise blessed, and, and you trust God in that aspect, and you know that you're some kind of an African in some sort of a way, even after 400 years, then why can't we trust God for Africa? You understand? Why can't we trust God for for our own faith? You understand? You know, that, that's just a, a question I ask myself. But I, I kind of got the answer the more you study, you understand, the word. Jah will show you in more ways than one you know, the real answers to those questions. But one must first of all accept that personal yoke, that, that personal individual yoke. You just take my yoke upon you. You understand? Learn of me. You just learn of him. We are to learn of the Messiah, Yeshua. We get to learn of the Jesus Christus. Both in his racial identity. Yes, he is what we call Ethiopian or a black man. Today he will be considered a Negro, black, colored, based on the, the world's standards. If we were to see Jesus Christ as he was in historical times. But it's, it doesn't stand with the fact he's black. And a lot of the black people, the lost sheep, still being lost, still not grasping the fullness of it, have just accepted, yes, Christ is black, and yes, the Egyptians were black, and yes, Moses most likely was black, but they took him as an Egyptian, and it's black, 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 black. But they, it was so strange, you know, that they accept the outer, but they miss the inner. A lot of us, a lot of us have suffered that. It's only when we're born again that we get in the true orientation. We really truly get grounded, but we have to grow in that knowledge of him. So we were talking about the Psalms of David and we, we, we bring this book into um, as an exhibit and if you want to order a copy, you can go to the, the website, the book the, the bookstore or books forward slash books at www.lojsociety.org You can go there and you can order a copy of this today. Now, in this book the reason why we brought this forward is because as we're expanding now on what the disciple means, a Dekka Mesmur. This is an individual disciple. We broke down the word Dekka from its two of uh, Afro Shemitic, Ethiopic, and an hard root of Dekika. Dekika from the Gutas, and Dekika means a child. And 
implied sense the children, the Gika Israel, the children of Israel, the the Gika Ethiopia, the children of Ethiopia, or the Gika Ethiopiaian, Ethiopiaian, the children of the Ethiopians, Amos nine and seven. That's the bridge right there. That's the bridge. And it's not just a racial bridge to say the Israelites were blind. But it's also a God, it's a national, a nationality map. So that takes us out of 13th and 14th Amendment artificial person under a constitution. You know what I'm saying? That counts you in that artificial status. If you accept it, if you waive your natural rights as a artificial person, 13th and 14th Amendment, that deprives you of your true human rights. You know what I'm saying? And that also um, separates you from the family of nations. You ever wonder why niggas are always just talking about little local issues? It's like the, the world is like a block, even with the gang. Look at what goes on in the so called um, gang land. You know what I'm saying? Look what goes on concerning the gangs, right? Concerning the gangs. The gangs are fighting over, over territory they don't even own. You know, like the gentrification thing. Folks talk about, oh, they're moving into, they're taking over, like white people are taking over our neighborhood. I mean, the, the European, these foreign nationals, if we understand even the history they tell us, they took over the whole continent based on pseudo religious, a religious thing. But they thought they were the children of Israel and that America was their command. Canaan. You can see why now when you put that together that they are trying to um, distract us or say, oh, black people pretending to be Hebrews or black people think they're Hebrews. Ha 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 ha. LOL. No, the, the, the joke is on you. John laughs in heaven. Yeshua laughs in heaven because he knows he has him in derision. You know what I'm saying? But when we don't listen to the word of the King of Kings, Christ. No, when I accept the evidence, and these sort of books, once again, we submit them to evidence like this right here. You understand? This right here, Valley of the Dry Bones. Let's um, put this in the, the Valley of the Dry Bones right here. This particular book is a very important book to, for us to read, especially in this time of black skulls and bones. You understand? Of black, you know, because this tells you about what the condition you know, the conditions that face black people in America. And when I picked this book again, I had this in our collection, but I went and um, some years ago and started to look at it again. I said, wow, this book still is so relevant. And the more I began to preach and teach on this, we're noticing events and things that are happening in the so-called, quote, real world. And, and this is explaining it down to even um, stop and frisk. You know what I'm saying? Exodus or stop and frisk. Y'all you know, you know, got to decide. Black on black violence. You understand? Know Fighting over crumbs. Not not even owning the land. Being being stuck on uh, have have 50 families on a, a, a square acre of land in a in a in a concrete slave ship that they want to call a project. And we really wonder why black people are living in this. You understand? And if you read these arguments here and the, and the evidence for yourself, there's nothing in this that is a, a against another race of people because it's telling you about what the Gentiles and white folks and Europeans have done and it's telling us who we really are and where we really stand in this struggle. So once again, this particular book for those and this uh, discipleship part two of discipleship message is special discipleship message. You know, and we thought by this time those who are what we call the incomes, the, those who are in compliance, who have sent forth the application, have sent forth um, the particular um, 
we call that like a shekel fee, so to speak, or the ten dollars, so forth and so on. If you haven't heard anything, we ask you if you've seen this video, you know saying just let us know you're out here. Just let us know, brother. I saw the video. I accept what you say. I'm, I'm dealing with what I need to do right now to get my head and heart and my house in more order. The job guide and protect. I and I, I and I, or, you know, just, just a little message like that. Go to the contact at www.mojsociety.org. You understand? Um, but there is going to be more, and y'all willing to do more communication um, forthwith. You understand? But we do see that there's a growth. You understand? There's a growth of, of, of brothers and sisters. You understand? Ones are seeing, seeing amazing miracles. One's telling us that they wasn't even to read it. You know, some brothers and sisters said, you know, they know how to read, but they wasn't all into it. They're just trying to make papers. And then they started to check out some of these things we're speaking about, and it's like, I mean, even you can, you can hear the joy in their voices when you get to speak to them. Or if you're reading a letter, you know, son, you'll read a letter, and it's amazing. Some of the letters, it's just, this person handwriting regular words, but you can feel the spirit of what they're saying. Like, wow. You know, and it's really humbling. You know, for I and I. Because they're saying that's because of what we have done, and we're saying, give Jah the glory. You understand? Know give Jah and Joshua and Yeshua all the glory, brothers and sisters. But on the second part of the discipleship message, we were speaking about an abhorrent meaning of discipleship. That come as more, right? A child or a little one of the song. But then remember what we said about that cat and the geek, that cat cat, that it can also to like pound something, to refine something. You understand? Know In other words, the children, those who become as children again, and the songs are refined or embedded in them. You understand? Know These songs, there is such a power in the songs. You understand? Know I mean, I mean, especially when, the, when, when one has faith. You understand? When one has come to Abba, come to the Father, in grace, through faith, just as you will read and study in the Bible, just as the Bible testifies to, right? So, child of the song. Then we mentioned how in Ethiopia, holy Ethiopia, let's, today's Ethiopia is secular, political so-called Ethiopia. Yesterday's Ethiopia and tomorrow's Ethiopia, but yesterday's Ethiopia was holy and imperial Ethiopia. You understand? The very foundation of the kingdom of God on earth. You know, that's that kingdom that Daniel talks about, which would not be given to another people. No other people, you understand, overcame our 3,000 year Solomonic and Davidic throne of David. Nobody overcame them. And it, it, it's the very same word that we like in that concerning Ethiopia with Daniel, the prophecy of Daniel. That's the stone. That's the stone that Daniel sees that it crashes, it dashes and smashes the clay and the iron feet of the beast. That beast in it, that statue that was erected for all to worship with gold at its head and silver and, and brass and coming down to the legs and the feet. It's, it's, it's clay. It's like they ran out of good materials. You know, the true the gold and the silver and the precious so-called materials. Then they had to work with clay and, 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 and iron. And, and those things don't mix. And then out of the heavens come the stone. Right? Could it be an extraterrestrial ET, a heavenly Ethiopian event? The stone comes and hits the feet. Now, all that's a vision. That's a vision scene. But as we interpret it, as Don L. interpreted, as we see um, our story and history in its proper non Gentile Eurocentric disorientation, you know, when we look at the picture in its proper, we orientate the picture correctly. It becomes very clear who we are and where we stand in the struggle. So let's understand it. All right? Let's, let's, um, I know that's that small, these songs are here, but um, his, 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 his Excellency, Burhan Salah, is, is 
a very special brother for us when we recognize that the Psalms, like the Psalms of David, you can, if you study the ball ball and the wheel of Psalms, it leads you right forward to this prophecy, to this word, to the Bible. That's why so many brothers and sisters, um, black children, Hebrew, and even um, Gentile say it's, it's because of Bob. You know, listen to Bob's songs, inspire them to read their Bibles, to study up more, and find the half of the story. So we should give thanks for that. Was he a, a man? That he might not have fallen, he fallen short or something? I mean, don't we all? Did he personally offend you? Okay. Do what the Bible says to give. Let go of those, those bad vibes. You understand? If there's something clear that's wrong, acknowledge that that's wrong. But let us accept the good, you understand, for goodness sake, even in our brother Bob Martin. We've heard so much nonsense out here among one and one. You know, like, okay, he ate some meat or maybe he ate some pork or I, I don't know. We don't even know whether really have people say, oh, they would be. So, so what do, that's like saying that if you stumble, you must fall. And even if you fall, you can't get up. That's not faith, my people. That's not the teaching of his majesty. You understand? Those are the teachings of demons. So avoid the avoid that. You understand? In that process of new birth. You don't want to get a partial birth. You understand? And then spiritually speaking, get aborted. You understand? Because you're being false witness. So the discipleship is discipline. You understand? And that discipline is that individual disciple and he theologically speaking, a child of the Psalms. Well, we have daily songs. Now we have that daily song right now in Holy and Imperial Ethiopia. The, the songs of David were committed to memory. You understand? Were committed to memory. Even if one didn't read anything else, or even if they could not read, they, they heard and they committed this to memory. You understand? I mean, to heart and to mind. And now, as we break down right here, is the fivefold, and this is the answer to this particular, um, this particular uh, upright, upright pentagram, upright pentagram. So let us let us see if we can. Um, all right, let us see. There's a couple of versions of it. This is this is one right here. I and I, I and I mother-in-law put this, she made this cover for it, our Ethiopian mother-in-law right here, and even the colors are very Zingurgur, in the Zingurgur um, um, lips, right? So, yeah, this is, this is just a cover that was put on it. These right here, I think, are the fire key psalms, from fire key psalms right here. But this is what you see right here, we wrote on the board, the Mesmore, the, the Mesmore for Mesmora Dawit. All right, this is the Psalms of David right here. And this is what we call the little book, the, the little kind of book where they have some of the, there's a Virgin Mary, but that's the, the other picture. So we have to replace those pictures. So artists, you know, uh, get the painter paint, right or right. You know, we're going to live by Jah's laws. You know, we're saying in Jah's way of life. So that's the opening there. And this is Psalm 1. This is in the Amharic, we also have it in the Gittas, but this is an example. This kind of little book right here, this is an example right here, right? Miss Glenova, Kofortuna, Kodigala, hey there. Right, so um, this is kind of an example, as you can see, if you notice these kind of books, you can put it in, let me open up a pocket over here, you can put it in a, a pocket right here, here you go. Let's see, so you can go in uh, breast pocket so um whenever you know you open it up you can read now there's certain specific psalms of the day you might have to turn on that light one more time because here's what we have distributed to many ones and ones who've been able to mail out to unfortunately we've been trying to work on certain discipleship packages as you see right here right right here these are something that we printed up right here from like the Orthodox Church. Now here you have the evening song. That means every evening there's a consistent um, song. Now on the day the song 
changes. You see over here, on different days, the Psalms change. Right? So if we look, if we look right here, let's see, if we look right here, we're at uh, June, right, uh, June 22nd. So 2-2 two, two over here, and we go over to the June column. Oh, beautiful. Psalm 22nd, 26. 26. So you get to see it like that. 26. Alright. So you can see the date over there and the month right there. This was one formulation, but this is um, the chart, right? Right? The chart. Okay, let's take that light off. Alright, this is. This is a uh, little handy chart which we made copies of and we distributed them all. I'm going to take to have some on um, like a PDF file where some of these things um, one can uh, download, print up for themselves, or they can also other brothers and sisters out there at, at, at the church or, or group can also disseminate it to other ones and ones. Now, Little simple things like this. This doesn't really require a big course. Once you have this particular daily Psalms chart, right, and you're studying um, the sabbatical, keeping the Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath, and using that particular time, especially in these collective Torah teachings. And we're now in the book of, here we are right here, we're in the book of the Midbar, right, the book of Numbers, right, and we're at 37 moving into the 37. So hopefully that after this, on one of the next um, following videos, we're going to touch on that particular um, um, 37th parasha known as Shalach. Now, as you said before, what is so very interesting about that is number 37, 1937, the founding of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated by Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bayan, as well as the 37th Psalm that we appropriately name while um, involved in federation activities during the whole time of, of, of power, of attorney, and other, um, other uh, works that we were doing at that particular time. We said that song, you want to pray for Shashimani? The pray for Shashimani song is Psalm 37. And check it out for yourself, Psalm 37. Come on forward, we'll deal with that. We just wanted to put that there so that one can also see that that even connects to what we're saying right here. So the daily songs, that means that every day, what we usually do is, for example, today's song would be according to this right here, today's song would be 26, the 26th song for um, Friday, June 22nd, right, according to our ancient, our ancient daily order of reading. Now, since it would be, in the West we call it Friday, right? The evening song would be 93. The evening song would be 93 for this particular day. As for the Sabbath, the evening song would be 92. But here's the key thing that we learn in discipleship as we study in the scripture that God, John, Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu said, evening and morning. So the evening proceeds. Why do we, as as Hebrews or Hebrews, Hebrews and Beta Israel, why do we begin the Sendex or the Shabbat from Friday evening? Why in the Ethiopic, um, the Holy Covenant tradition, when there is a holy day, say if the holy day is is tomorrow, right? That means that this evening, the evening before that day, would be the holiest time. That's when we would gather. That's when we would go to the next day, so the day to Christian. That's when we would chant praises and offer prayer and so forth and so on. Because it's evening and morning. So in the West, you have the exact opposite. What they call it, they said that the evening, it follows the day. But Jah's word says that the evening of the day, it precedes the day. So that's also a very important um, point to note and to put in application. Because if you don't understand that, you will be out of divine time. You know, you know what I'm saying? So you're chanting the evening song, 
what you chant in the evening song in the disorientation, not looking to the east. So this is a word of note, because time is very important. Time is the essential, more than just time, but time is in that sense for more economic, monetary, secular reasons. That's why people have watches on. But the real time, we understand the seasons. We understand both in the practical sense. And we have to learn these things sooner than later, recognizing the whole world order is breaking down. You understand? I mean, the, the, the most um, logical conclusion to this whole global situation is that the earth is going to break down to something like it did in ancient times. You know what I'm saying? Where people have to reestablish, you know what I'm saying, civilization. And we have that civilizing tool for ourselves because the way we're living in this captivity is totally uncivilized, the way so-called Negroes, Blacks, and colors. And the only solution is to know who you are and where you stand in the struggle. Now, with that being said, the daily psalms is the first prerequisite for a disciple. It's a regular, I, I would say it's, it's, your, it's your daily um, discipline. Do you understand? Your daily discipline. Even before you learn, say, the language, or at least the language of prayer, the first aspect of learning in Mark language should be connected with the scriptures, and it should be connected with some of the Zohar Selah, the constant prayer. And we're going to publish some documentation that's out there if you know where to look over. You know, if you go to some of the Orthodox sites, some of them, if you check out the site that we pointed, pointed to, not pointed out to you, the, um, com. as you go to those brethren site right there, you click on the mark and you follow the link, it'll lead to daily um it'll lead to constant prayer. So what to hello if you can read that in the heart if you're on that level. But if you're not, you then don't don't lose hope. You, you know, don't be afraid that you can't. Remember to spell fear and doubt. And the only thing that that dispels it is to feast on the faith, to feast on his word. You understand? And when you fellowship with others, there has to be those very same basic qualifications. In other words, you have to love your brother or your sister as you love yourself. That means that you know there's forgiveness with each other, but one has to seek forgiveness. That means they have to be aware to recognize, recognize, like Christ said, how you want to take the speck out somebody's eye and you've got the beam in yours. Check out yourself. That's why the first level, discipleship speaks to the individual eye. Each of us are the individual eye. And there was more is required than just growing a dreadlock. More is required than just smoking marijuana. More is required than just wearing ice gold and green or red, yellow, and green. More is required than and going to a uh, uh, reggae dance, or even in going to a Naya Bing. More is required according, not to me, but according to the teaching of His Majesty. According to the very clear teaching that every Rastafari who knows how to read and everyone who knows how to hear can and should have already heard. So this is known information. It was, and this is known information. We, we, we're not compromising. You know, because the, the freedom of millions of people is not an object up to um, compromise. You know, and we're not going to allow phobias or fears and doubts. You know, saying and he saying and she saying the world or what this so-called bread drain or cis train might have said in their own imagination. You know, saying we need documentation, we need evidence. You understand? Know That's why he says to search and to seek it out. You understand? Seeking, you shall find. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. But knowledge and belief or, or, or trust, confidence, and faith is different. They relate. They work together. But it's important that we understand the distinctions, the scriptural, biblical distinctions. You know, because once we're able to circumnavigate this book, and have a good foundation. In Yeshua, 
the glory of His Father, our Father. Nothing is impossible for us. Nothing. But without that right orientation, it's like our people are afraid of their own shadow. And, and the whole trust and confidence of black people, you already know what it is. You understand? I mean, I mean, I mean, we think the worst of each other, sometimes rightly, but more times wrongly, because that's a part of a certain conditioning, programming, a kind of a false or a counter discipline to true discipleship. So in coming out of that, recognizing, recognizing the faith base, you know, the faith base prerequisites, you understand, which is, which is the teaching of, of God, you understand, and Christ. The teaching the commandment of God, make it simple. Revelation says these are the overcomers. Those who overcome all this, all this chaos, all this evil doing that we all are exposed, those who will overcome it will be those who, who, who keep the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. So that kind of gives you the basic overstanding. We have to get into those details because within the details and the study of it, you understand, as we study it, then we're able to show and prove ourselves as workers truly doing God's works and not our own things, calling it God's work, but there's no fruitfulness. It's like when Christ saw the tree, remember the fig tree, and the tree had a lot of leaves, a lot of green leaves on it, but it had no fruits. You know, I and I, I and I, you know, um, for myself as an individual brother, I don't want to be fruitful looking in a sense like that tree. And then when Christ steps to me, there's no fruitfulness. You understand? It was like you look the part, but you are not. You understand? And, and, and the only way to avoid that is to submit to Adoni, Adonai, as Adonai. Submit to our black Lord. You understand? We submitted to the white man as a boy, and and, and, and his Skyzeus and his Caesar Kaiser Borgia, Caesar Borgia, we submitted to that. Now that we learn that the truth about it is that it's black, we turn away from it. So therefore, all the hell and the chaos and Babylon and confusion, in a sense, also is John's righteous judgment. See, everyone still is free to decide for themselves. You know that every man has the right to decide his what own destiny. You know so we have to recognize it as well. You may love others and you may know or want or hope that this is best for them. But but where we have a more complete free will is of the free will that Jah has given us for ourselves. So, so discipleship is is the is a step into the true brave new world of the King of Kings and his Christ. Discipleship is that first primary step. Now, we said Mesmur come from Zemmere, and Zemmere means to chant. And there's a difference between chanting and singing. And this is the key thing. I knew that Rastafari, you know, even though a lot of the ones wasn't like, you know, no big time scholars, whatever, but it was a it was a kind of a, a spiritual, it's that his majesty poured out his spirit. You understand? Even years ago, more Rastafari years ago were talking about the Amharic language than today. And they didn't have the resources that we did. You understand? So we are bringing shame on the good name of our Godfather and our elder brother, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we need to stop that. Need to, and each of us has an individual responsibility. All right, each of us has an individual responsibility. In fact, in our order of business right here, we're about to publish this. We call this the UCC, the Universal, you know, saying Church Code, the Universal Church Code. Or we could have called it the Unified. Sounds similar to the Unified Commercial Code. Now. As we mentioned before, it's basically based 
on, on this template of this document, the bylaws. The bylaws, it conducts how business, how the business of an organization is dealt with. Because it's part of our, the, the, the fruit of our discipline, the fruit of the spiritual foundation of us individually is that when we come together to do any work, we will have trust and confidence in the King of Kings and in our brother and sister. You understand? Who we are relatively, should be relatively assured of, you understand? Based on their word and their testimony, that they too are truly brothers and sisters. They recognize the standards. You understand? We are all are accountable to the standard or the word, the utterance of the King of Kings, and to the testimony of His Christ, i.e., the Bible. Therefore, ergo, silly, we must learn it and study it. You understand? There is time. You understand? Today is the day. Today is the acceptable day. Today is the day. If one would recognize and, as you say, carpe diem, you understand? Seize the day. Seize the opportunity. All right? All right. So, with that being said right there, um, we say, by the authority of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus, Christ, to the glory of our God's Father, the conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah, H.I.M., His Imperial Majesty, Hylas Selassie I, the elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia, and based upon the Holy Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, known to us as the Metzhah Kedus, and also recognized and sanctioned under international law since 1948 by Article 18 and Article 28 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UDHR. Now, that right there is our statement of authorization. Because all say, well, you're doing all this by whose authority? Remember that question which is short. By whose authority? So it's by authority of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the Bible and the testimony of His Majesty show us that Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, is important. And then when you recognize how important in this world and in the world to come, in this five cycle life and in our inner, in our spirit and soul life, why it's so important, then you recognize why the European, the Gentile, has tried to whitewash it, and whenever we get too close to the root of that, he tries to then pop it, flip it, and say, it doesn't matter what race Jesus Christ is. It doesn't matter, because race is seed. He's of the seed of David. And, and the seed of David is not some mythical or hypothetical thing in outer space. It's something very real that we can trace on the face of the planet Earth. And we search it the throne of David, we find it in holy and imperial Ethiopia. And they are black people, if you please. And thus the Bible says in Amos 9 and 7, Are you not like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? And once again, that idea of children, of child, that 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 comes in. So the daily psalm is one of the daily disciplines that each of us should find some time after we rise in the morning or after we rise in the evening, whenever we rise, find some time to sit down and to let's let's give you the the five the fivefold keepers. To sit down with the fivefold keepers. One, two, three, four, and five. Right? Firstly you must hear the word. Right? Firstly, you must hear the word. Right? Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Right? And hearing by the word of Jah, by the word of Yah, by the word of God. So hearing is very important to our faith and the building of our faith. We already know that you can be one can be strong in faith. And faith has to do admission or admittance, what you admit as true, what you hold in your own psyche, in your own 
yourself to be true. You might not have the knowledge of it at the level of so-called belief. Okay? As well as, let's do this right here. Let's put the three, the three, the three candles, right? Remember the three candles? One, two. Now they take these three candles in the Masonic Lodge. So the first candle, we'll put a B here, is belief. The second candle is faith. The third candle is fruition. It almost looks like um, one of these modern internet acronyms, BFF. Best friend forever, right? Or brotherhood forever. You understand? You understand? Um, yeah, best friend forever. Brotherhood, uh, brother and friend forever. So it's BFF squared. Now, what does it stand for? Belief. At the first level, we all have some idea of belief. We might call it by a different word. And the word B I E, but belief has gotten a, a bad name. Mostly because people are ignorant because nobody really studies. You understand? So they're using words, but they don't understand what the true meaning or context really is. The next one is faith. Now we pointed out before that faith, right? Faith is, 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 is a scholarship. Right, is a scholar. We're going to go through this in a, in, a, in a larger view right here. We just want you to reflect on these, these three lights. What are the three lights? So called three lights in the lodge. What they originally come from? They originally come from at the first level, the first stage, one has belief. They have some sense of trust or some sense of confidence. You while maybe not possessing a full knowledge. You know, like you might hear this message. You know saying one might hear this message, but really don't know fully if it's true. It sounds, it might sound true, but they don't know for themselves. That's why Christ said, you shall what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So remember, it begins with hearing. And if you're listening to this message and also checking out others who preach from the Bible and teach from the Word and getting familiar with the Word, you are building up your faith just by hearing. Just by hearing. Now, in the, in the next lecture, we have talked about how many people don't have a good self-sense of themselves. The over them, because all they know is men and people. All they've heard is negative. It's like niggas, blacks, and colored things. All we've heard is negative stuff. So it's easy for us to say, oh, a nigga ain't shit. Black people ain't shit. You understand? Africans ain't shit. Ethiopians ain't shit. An Israelite ain't shit. A Hebrew ain't shit. You know, it's easy for us to say those sort of things about ourselves. Why? Because what we've heard has built up a mild seedess. Mild seedess. Mild seedess. Mild seedess? Mild means bad in Latin. And seedess means faith, or bad faith. You know, you often hear people say, well, I did this in good faith. Was it really in good faith? Or was it in bad faith? Because you had a belief, you believed in somebody or something, but you didn't gain any knowledge. You heard about it. You understand? But you didn't be about it. You heard about something. Yeah, I heard them talk about Christ in life. I never really checked it out for myself. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of thing that's going on. And that leads to an inertia in the movement. Because one cannot move further than they are convinced or confident in their hearts. And then are confident in their soul. What is the soul? Let me break it down for the high and build it up so it can be, it can be one can understand this. When you see the word soul, the word soul, sometimes they say usually refers to the mind. In other words, the Hebrews use the word soul, sometimes they say it's mind. How we use the word psyche in psychology. But the soul refers to the mind, the will, and the emotions. So it said, the Lord restores my soul. He restores my mind, my true mind, my natural mind. 
not the artificial mind that has been programmed by what I may have experienced in life, all the bad things, all the bad people and things that I did and others did to me. No. Because you're born again. You know what I'm saying? You, you recognize that you were sort of winged and bamboozled like almost everyone who was born into this world. You recognize that the God of this world is not the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You recognize that biblically, and then you begin to recognize that experientially in what you experience. See, a lot of us have experienced all this negative stuff. You see, so we can go on and talk about, look, and this bad thing and that bad thing, and all that, oh, they don't care. And so, you know, we can go on with that forever, and that keeps you in that, on that treadmill, in the rat race. You know what I'm saying? Living rat-like lives. Because people living like rats, that means you must be in an artificial mind. You are not in your right mind. And most of us have not been in our right mind. So we would get born again and begin with a little bit of belief. Yeah, I hear the words of the Rasta man say. You know I've heard the words of the Rasta man. I've heard and I hear the words. You hear the what? You hear the words of the Rasta man say. Babylon, your drum gone down, gone down. Babylon, your drum gone down. You know, you hear the words, so you hear it. Now, what's the next level you got to get to once you hear it? You understand? Know once you hear it, you have to get to the level of reading it. So next is read. You have to read. Now, we could play on the word read and read, you know, because like this that I hold in my hand, it's like a reed. It's a, a measuring stick, but rod like a reed was given to him. You understand? Know so we can play on the word there, read, read, right? But we're talking about read here where you read. You know, oh, this is Babylon. It's fallen. It's fallen. There's no throne for her. She has to sit on the ground. Okay, that's the, the prophets. New Testament. Oh, wow. What's this about? You know, that's, that's how it begins. Now when you start to do that and gain true knowledge, get a knowing, get a foundation to what you've heard, you know where you're at right now? The second light has come on. You have the second F, and the second F, I mean, excuse me, the first F, the first of the two F's is faith. So the second light right here is faith. The second light right there is faith. I have this candle stick thing. next wing of the house. When, we, when, when I get into that um, fully of message itself, I'll remember to get this candlestick. I got the candlestick that got three candles on it. Like it's, a, it's the whole three candles. And um, I can use that to better explain these three lights right here. The second one, thank you, thanks to Brother, um, was it Tommy Bay? I've seen a video of his on the Morris Brothers. He kind of reminded I of this and then the Holy Spirit made this connection he's not teaching me along right now. I just to point out how uh, those particular brothers here who are also Hebrews, even though they call themselves Moabites. So see just because you're a Hebrew doesn't mean you're an Israelite. You know what I mean? Because there's many different heights who are Hebrews and they are not Israelites. You know what I'm saying? But that's a that's a point aside to clarify a little bit more about that too. But this First candle, the F right here, this one right here, is faith. Now, faith is the scholar. Faith is not just, see, the believer is here. They, they'll hear the word. And they believe it here because they heard it. I believe I heard them say, you know, believe here, believe here. But now when you read it, this sense of faith now is bringing about the scholarly level. It's bringing about the learning level. It's bringing about the real disciple level, the discipleship level. All right. Um, Christ said in the Great Commission to make disciples within of all nations. You know, teaching them to observe whatever He has taught us. So whatever we have learned of Christ, this is what we're supposed to communicate. So if you wonder why we don't hear more of the true Christ man way of life? Because most ones probably don't know it, but they have not read it. They've heard things, but they have not read it. They have not sourced the information.
information for themselves. Rather, they have not resourced the information. So this is seeking source, right? Seeking source. Remember, let's not forget, put that right there, let's not forget um, the fact that um, Isaiah, right? Isaiah, um, Isaiah chapter 8 and, I think that was 16, Isaiah 8 and 16 is one of the first places that we have disciple mentioned. So in this part too, let's go to the script, let's go to the scripture right here, right? Not the, don't flip the script, go to the script. So here, disciple is um, 8 and 16, so it's Old Testament. Right? Some people make you think that disciple is just a New Testament thing. No. It is an Old Testament, right? And as this particular concordance Cruden say right here, literally a disciple is a scholar, a learner, especially one who believes, which is the basic, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is that first step in the doctrine. The doctrine is the teaching of the Tim and Herod thought or other Jews, Talmud, of his teacher and follows him. So who is our teacher? I'm your tutor. As your brother, I'm your tutor. But who is our teacher, either my teacher? It is the Shua. It is the Yeshua Christus, our black Lord and Savior. All right? He is our teacher. He is our Rebbe, or Rebbe, or Rebbe. All right? It is the Shua. So now here when we turn to Isaiah chapter 8 and 16, it says right here, bind of the testimony, bind it. Now Christ uses the word in um, Matthew, I think it's Matthew, if I'm correct, Matthew um, 11. He uses the word in Matthew chapter 11 um, of take my yoke, take my yoke. A yoke is a bind, you understand? He says, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So he's showing that he's the master, Yeshua, our black Lord, and he's saying, take my yoke. You understand, like a collar, in a sense. That's why in some Christianity, some of the priests have this collar-like thing, the white thing, and little thing there, the little white thing, the whole white collar, so forth and so on. That, that is in the Protestant the Euro, the Eurocentric tradition. Take my yoke upon you, but the yoke is more than just an outer style of clothing. You understand? It, it, it's, we're speaking spiritually here, or we say metaphysically here. Take my yoke, which is say, take my discipline upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke, or my discipline is easy. The discipline of Yeshua is not something that's beyond our capacity or ability. It depends on your particular situation, but that it cannot be done. Even in and especially in your situation, whatever the situation is, you understand? Know One can do this if they make their wills obedient to the good influences of the Word. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That which we have to carry is not something that's heavy. He, he's not putting on us cumbersome yokes. You understand? Like in the bondage form of almost all religions, they put these yokes on people, especially on the lay people, the people who are ignorant of what's really contained at the root, like the heart of what it is they say they believe, because they're ignorant, they haven't learned. That's why we say that the Ecclesiastes or system or what the Roman church how they have divided the laity. You see, that was a big controversy in Roman Catholicism that Martin Luther brought more to light in the Protestant Reformation. The people could not even read the word for themselves. In fact, that was the Roman church almost edict that we don't want people to know the Bible for themselves because when they see something wrong, they will recognize the higher authority. You see? So let's, let's recognize the role of the Bible and what a wonderful thing that Matthew has done for us, fulfilling the prophecy and, and bringing the press, the printing press. So we seek to continue that process with, with even the printing of these 
necessary um, 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 books, necessary resources, these are some vital resources. Well, these resources help us to get to the source, not to get the so to the source outside of us, but the kingdom of heaven is within, Christ says so. So it's esoteric. So when our light has, 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 has come on, when we are illuminated, when we are full, when, when we are confident within our spirit, then we would have the, the wisdom and the courage you're meant to do what it is that we have to do and to also fellowship and work together with our other brothers and sisters. You understand? We won't have these mixed up moods and attitudes and vibes and a lot of other stuff that cause the people and the movement to wander around this wilderness of North America. Alright? So this is faith, the second candle, and the scholarship level. I just want to make that link with the discipleship level. So those who are just hearing these messages but haven't really taken it to heart, you know what I'm saying, to really study and show themselves approved and, 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 and really check it out and know it for themselves, they still have this out of court. So this is like the out of court, right? This is the out of court. This is the, um, the, the most holy, and this would be like the holy of holies if we, if we break it down on a tabernacle sort of a level. Okay. So once you get from the outer court, and, you, and really it's, it's here that you come into the house. You know, if you can lay this down in another diagram way of showing the tabernacle, the same three candles that you'll find in the Masonic Lodge, which is just a kind of a uh, extrapolation, really, from the pattern of the tabernacle and the ancient mystery school that we see particular steps. It's almost like college students go through these steps too. So when you get to this level, you understand, which is the second F right here, which is fruition. 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 F-R-U-I-T-I-O-N. Fruition. Fruition, right? Faith and fruition. Let me get some things to hold some of these um, key pages so I can re reference it. So here in Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 16, which is the earliest mention, right? The earliest mention, so we we'll do right here, is that from this one right here, we'll put Isaiah, right? Isaiah 8 and 16. Why don't you make a note of Isaiah 8 and 16? That's the, the, the earliest reference to disciple or disciples that we have in the Bible or Old Testament. It binds up the testimony. Seal. Seal it. Remember that, that the, the copper line the tribe of Judah, you understand? He's able to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now we showed you what this book is. The Metzop Caduce of Hazel Philosophy of the Revised and Mark Bible. The, the authorized, which is often called and known as the 1961-62 authorized um, um, Bible in them hard, also the divide and hard Bible. And once again, so you can see these, um, I want to show you these seals right here. Let's get a little light on here. All right, these, there's these seals right there. You see it? All right, you see those seals right there? There's the seals, the Mets, the Hafik, the Deuce. And then what the Bible says is on the back of the book, right? It's on the back of the book. So you see, this is one cover, this is two cover, well, this is the back cover, and it's the front cover, but really the back of the book is the spine, all right? You see the spine of the book right here. Let's see if I can get it right here. All right, you see this? Mets of Caduce. All right, just to, to show you these letters here. And in fact, let's go to one of the title pages. Right there, Matthew Hafik Kedusin, Matthew Hafik Kedusin, Matthew Hafik Kedusin. See that way of also um um learning the Barbate. That's in the Barbate of Matthew Hafik Kedusin. You know, so when one is able to read this for themselves, 
because then they would have graduated from the basic level of, of Nabob Bay. Right, and that's his Majesty's printing press. Right, baby. Just to show and prove. Let's show you one more page right here. So you can see this is Genesis right here. Right, this is Genesis right here. For the Oritvetitiratis. The Oritvetitiratis. Alright? Alright, so just wanted to show you that right there. All right, all right. So this is the book of the seven seals. We know it might be the conquering line of the tribe of Judah upon the throne of David, Ethiopia's history, all the ancient witnesses going back several millennia testify to the verities or the truth. So therefore, that conclusion, that is affirmative knowledge. I want to do a separate bit on this, but this is another book that we just were able to publish. Let's see if we can get some light on this as well. Okay, this book right here is the Church History of Ethiopia. This is called the Church History of Ethiopia, and it's by a one named um, Michael Geddes. This is the 16th thing I mentioned before. This is this book was from 1680, no 96. 1696. That's why the print we use the inside cover. I mean the cover that they use. Uh, the the um, what do you call it? The title page for the cover here. This is a very very vital um, book because this book contains that 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 testimony. So we have documents going back to 1696, even before then, but. And this is in English, some of the old style writing. An S looks like S's. And once you get over that, it's kind of very clear. And, and the interesting testimony here, and then this is part of our testimony. And the seal uh, test, bind up the testimony. So we bind up the testimony and we seal the law among my disciples, the word says. Right? And further along in verse 20 it says, verse 20 in Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter um, 8, in verse 20 it says, to the law and the testimony, and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light, there is no divine illumination in them, if they don't speak according to this word. So that is another example of how we shall know them, who is our brothers and who is our sister, to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no divine illumination, there is no light, there is no barahan. Therefore, there is no barahan, there can't be no salam. And his majesty, um, sealing, unsealing press was called, and it's called the barahan salam or the light and peace. Um uh, uh right. Is that is that correct? Yeah, or Mat Matemia, Matemia, you could uh Majamaria the Burhanana, Salam, Matem Matemiya De Tatiman. Matemiya De Printing House, Tatiman. It was sealed. So it's very interesting the, the word seal, and the word seal refers in the next sense, the very same word, to printing. So he said, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Now we get to Revelation. Revelation reveals the truth, right? In Revelation. In the book of Revelation, the overcomers, those who overcome the diabolical plot and conspiracy against the King of Kings and his Christ, against God, you are living God and His chosen people. You understand? And all faithful Christians, right? And it is so that they they keep the law of the, the commandment of God and the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. Now that's New Testament, right? In Revelation. Here we're still in the Old Testament, chapter 8, and verse 16 also added to that, you can put verse 20. The whole chapter is worthy of um, 
of uh, being read and studied. Let's move on to study here. Alright, so we're still on this candle right here. The second candle is faith. It's faith. But it's a scholar level. Right? It's a scholar. The belief is a hearer. You can be a forgetful hearer of the word. You can hear the word, but you don't forget that there's an application of what you need to do to to to, to receive, to Kabbalah, to Kevin. But once you come to that scholar level, you study. You can hear the third of the five, remember this is like into the five point star right here, is the upright five point star. Not down low five point star, which is the faith and mystery star. It's study. It's study. Right? Study to show myself approved to God as a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly. That means correctly. You know, was rightly dividing to be interpreted as explaining and applying, in other words, the word of truth. So here we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, study to shew thyself approved to God. So the study, we have to remember who we're seeking to approve ourselves, to God. To the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Hamosh. Because says, this is eternal life. That they may know you, Christ speaking to Abba, Abba Kutu. That they may know you.